So how many of you use open source hardware? How many of you released your own open source hardware? How many of you would like to? Excellent. So uh, let me just give the basics first of all. And the basic question is, what is open source hardware? Um, open source hardware is hardware where the design is made publicly available so that anyone can study from it, learn from it, modify it, distribute it, make it, sell it. And to also make and sell and design and learn from things based on derivatives of that design. And uh, this is sort of the excerpt of the preamble to the formal open source hardware definition, which you can find at oshawa.org. Um, also in basics, um, question is why? Well, open source hardware is a great thing for a lot of reasons. It's not for everybody, it's not for every application, but for a lot of things it's great. It gives people the freedom to control, modify, and improve their own technology. You have a thing, you can have access to the design so you can hack it and modify it and improve it. It encourages commerce by letting people work together to build new things. It can reduce engineering time by giving people a head start on designing and building things. It can reduce obsolescence and waste by letting people repair and repurpose and reuse their things. And frequently it allows people to cross political and economic barriers to make and distribute things in places where you can't get them or to communities who can't afford to get the commercial version of a thing. Um, and perhaps most importantly, it helps communities work together to uh, make better things. So here's a few great examples of open source hardware projects. So of course, we have the lovely Arduino. Um, but it's not just gadgety things that people are doing. There are beehives, there is tableware, there is furniture, there is satellites, there are laser cutters, there are scientific instruments, there are now laptops and desktop computers, there are 3D metal printers, there are houses, there are cars, there are art robots, there are prosthetics, there are cooking machines, there are looms and uh, vehicles and... Um, and now we're even having big names like Intel playing in open source hardware. And this is really exciting. So how does Oshawa fit into this? Oshawa is the Open Source Hardware Association founded in 2012 to uh, help facilitate open source hardware, primarily through education, teaching people about open source hardware and best practices for open source hardware. You are here. Um, also to um, uh, facilitate the community working together to uh, use open source hardware and to run the annual Open Hardware Summit. Uh, at the Oshawa webpage, you can find a document we've been working on over the last year which summarizes best practices for open source hardware. Uh, this document goes over, it sort of expands upon the definition saying how to actually do some of the things that they say in the definition of what open source hardware is, um, but also best practices as in what you should do, not just what you have to do. Um, so let's talk about those shoulds. We'll divide this into some musts and some mays. Um, open source hardware must provide publicly accessible design files in the original source format. So if you're using SolidWorks, you have to include your original SolidWorks files. If you're using Eagle, you'll include the original Eagle files. If you are designing in uh, Illustrator, you'll include the original Illustrator files. But you may also want to use other formats, but those are going to be auxiliary stuff that comes besides what's required. Open source hardware must allow anyone to study, make, distribute, and sell not just the design itself, but hardware made from the design and derivatives of it. Uh, open source hardware must clearly specify which parts of a design, if not the whole thing, are released as open source hardware. Open source hardware must not imply that derivatives are made by the original designer or that, uh, and open source hardware, if you're using someone else's open source hardware, you can't use the trademarks of the person who released that design in the first place. Um, I'm going to come back to the first three points in quite a bit more detail. Um, the maze. Open source hardware may, at its option, use the open source hardware mark to label things that are compliant. Uh, open source hardware may require that you uh, attribute the design that your hardware is based upon. And you may require that uh, your derived works will carry a different name or version number from the original. And open source hardware may be copied directly or you may make derivatives from it. So about that first must, the publicly accessible design files. So again, if you're starting with like a CAD uh, file, then you need to provide those original files in their native file formats. Um, 
Now, not everything comes from CAD. What if you have um, a hand-drawn blueprint? Then your scan of that is going to be considered the original in this case. Uh, you also, though, need to include additional drawings, specifications, and callouts that are necessary to build a thing. For example, if you're doing mechanical CAD, you may have a part file, but that doesn't actually specify everything about it. There's going to be a mechanical drawing as well that calls out what the surface finish is going to be and what material it's made of. You need to include a bill of materials. Um, it says what's in your kit, in your parts, and if you're making something that relies on software for its operation, you also need to include that software or that firmware under an open source license. Um, there's a couple things that are not allowed. So you can't substitute what we call compiled outputs for the original design files. And compiled outputs are things like Gerber files from a PCB making program, or IGES or STL files from a CAD program, or PDFs from Illustrator, or JPEGs from Photoshop. Those are derived things. Those are awesome. And if you can't include those, that makes it so other people can use it, and that's great. But it's not the original. And it's also not allowed to make a future promise. We'll eventually give you the source code. You can't call it open source until it's actually open source. Um, the best practice for uh, the uh, musts here, um, to use free and open source design tools when possible, uh, to use easily obtained off-the-shelf components and standard materials. These are not required, but they're very helpful. Uh, one of the nice things you can do is include things like JPEG outputs of your files, because then people can take them and they can put them into GitHub and uh, do a diff on them. You can do visual diffs in 2D and 3D now. If you have a CAD file, whether it's a circuit board or a, a chunk of metal, you can take two of them and compare them directly and see what their differences are. Um, on the uh, allowing anyone to study, make, modify, distribute, et cetera, Best practice is to use the open source hardware logo so people know it's open. Use a, a formal open source hardware license. Some of the popular ones are Creative Commons, CC BY or CC BY SA, the Tapper or CERN open hardware licenses, the MIT license, or a public domain declaration. Uh, what is not allowed as a substitute is a non commercial license. And a lot of people have done this, but it actually turns out that non commercial clauses are not compliant with either the definition of open source hardware or the definition of open source software. Um, a great example of number three, which is to specify which parts of a design are open source, is given by little bits. They have on their site a page that says, hey, look, our circuit boards have the open source hardware logo. These are open source designs. Here's where you can download them. But our logos, our trademarks, our connectors are proprietary, and those are ours. So that brings us to another point, which is best practice is it's not helpful to the community to hold a grudge against those parts of a design that are not released. We should celebrate what parts of a design are released to the community as open source hardware. This builds the community. Holding a grudge against people who don't release everything doesn't get us anywhere. Um, finally, open source uh, hardware projects can be copied directly or have derivatives created from them. Uh, when you're using an existing open source hardware design, the best practice is to improve the design, and re-release your changes. And this is sort of like going camping. You want to leave the forest better than you found it. Let's help build this community. And when you're releasing open source hardware designs, best practice is, number one, make sure you are emotionally prepared to let your project out in the world where it will be analyzed, dissected, copied, sold, modified, etc. And then tell the world about it. A great way to do that is bring it to the Open Hardware Summit. This year's summit is... Um, September 30th, October 1, in Rome. Wouldn't that be a nice place to visit? And uh, Call for Papers is open through the end of the month. Thank you very much.